1989, my elementary school teacher said to my mom, the only thing Karina is really good at is chatting. <laughs> I'd rather say I have always had a favor for communication. Oh, she was so annoyed by my constant chatter, and I was told to be quiet if I wanted to be a good girl. What we hear, see, what we're witnessing, what our inner voice is telling us, in other words, our experience, shapes our thinking. Our thinking shapes our performance, and our performance shapes our experience. Authentic communication is one of the most important skills a person can possess because it impacts your whole performance and is responsible for success or failure. So, if you want to achieve high performance, just learn authentic communication. Sounds super simple, doesn't it? Simple, not easy. Recently, I had a discussion with a man who asked me what I do for a living. And I told him, <clears throat> I'm a soft skill trainer with focus on communication and performance. And he asked, uh-huh, why do you choose two completely different topics? And I said, actually, these two topics are inseparable because the way you communicate has a direct influence on your behavior, on your actions, in other words, on your performance. He then shook his head and uh, ended the conversation with, ah, today's women, huh? <laughs> Couldn't you find a normal job like hairdresser or nurse? <clears throat> Without knowing it, he reminded me why I started specializing in communication, performance, authenticity. I come from a small village in Tyrol, Austria. Tradition was, and still is, very important here. Club life is a big thing. Not the clubs you probably are thinking of. I'm talking about the real cool stuff, like Blasmusik. <laughs> Schützengilde, Schuhplattler. And it's quite clear that you attend one of these clubs already as a child. Which club do you think I was in? <laughs> I was a Schuhplattler. The little girl in the red dirndl, that's me. The life path of a typical, well-behaved village girl, like I was, is uh, kind of pre-programmed. You choose one of the clubs you learn a gender-typical profession. You later meet your future husband in one of the clubs. You marry, build a house, and have at least two children. Of course you give up your profession, because as a woman, you find your fulfillment in the family. And then I came along. <laughs> I left the Schuhplattler. I quit my gender-typical, down-to-earth profession as a beautician to attend an acting school in Cologne. No husband, no house, no kids, and in my 30s. Karina, the black sheep of the village. <laughs> there, the black sheep, that's me. Oh. <laughs> but in my defense, after a few years of, my mother would say, rebellion, I returned to the sheltering lab of my home village. And I did what everybody was expecting from a good Tyrolean woman. I started a family and gave birth to my wonderful daughter. One point of the good woman checklist accomplished. <laughs> and I thought, this is the big thing. This is the fulfillment everybody was talking about. Well, it, it may surprise you, but being the mother of a newborn is not exactly this magical feel-good bubble the commercials so like to suggest to us. De <laughs> yeah. Depression, pain, guilt, anxiety. That was the truth. And I asked myself, what the heck is wrong with you? Becoming a mother is the destiny of us women. It's our major goal in life. Why didn't that make me happy? It was supposed to make me happy, shouldn't it? At least that's what I was always told. That's what I thought. 
what we hear, see, what we're witnessing, what our inner voice is telling us, shapes our thinking. Our thinking shapes our performance, and our performance shapes our experience. So many of my years were shaped by a fixed image of women, but to fulfill this role of a perfect woman and my deep desire for self-realization, I also wanted to start a career, become an entrepreneur. It, it, it felt like I was being ripped in half, trying to fit in the society standards, trying to fit in almost destroyed me. So, when you feel so bad, what do you do? What do you do? Get a coach, Get a coach. yeah, therapy. And if you don't have the courage to do that, you go on social media. Take a deep dive in this photoshopped world full of perfectionism. That's what I did. And between all these perfect posts of perfect people with perfect lives, I found a quote, and this quote changed my life, and it goes like this. How we speak to our children becomes their inner voice. How we speak to our children becomes their inner voice. And suddenly I realized that my inner voice that has been telling me for years what I have to do, be a good girl, don't stand out. What I can't do, start a business, become an entrepreneur, how I have to behave in order to be accepted by society. That was not my voice at all, and that was an epiphany. Because I understood that communication was the key to literally everything. Not only how we speak to our children, also how we speak to our friends, family, colleagues, and the most important of all, how we speak to ourselves in our own head. Because you people, you will never ever in your whole life talk to someone as much as you talk to yourself in your head. Communication is the way to <laughs> high performance. So this led to following conclusions for me. Either I keep on doing what I'm doing, keep feeling ripped in half, or I start learning about communication and change something. Obviously, I chose change. So these became my guiding principles from now on. Number one, I will find my own inner voice so I can push my performance on a new level. Number two, I will stop adapting to the ideas of others and start being authentic. And number three, the most important of all, I will teach my daughter point one and two. After years of study and research, what, what have I learned? What did I learn? Our communication is responsible for your success or failure. It influences yourself and the persons you're talking to. How we communicate influences your whole performance and it's an essential part of your presence. So what is important to keep in mind is the following. Communication is holistic, a conglomerate of many different aspects. Nonverbal aspects, such as mimic, gesture, body language. Um, do we make ourselves small because we don't want to stand out? Because we don't have the courage, we feel uncomfortable. Do we have the courage to stand up straight? Um, what else? Your emotions, your personality, your gender, age, cultural background, society standards. Even your outfit has an impact on your communicative performance. Who of you knows that you feel different, that you act different if you wear high heels or flip-flops? <laughs> Everything about you communicates. The way you're sitting here looking at me, what you're wearing, your makeup, this tells me something about you without you saying a single word to me. What you see, what you hear, what your inner voice is telling you, everything is communication. And communication is everything. That's why communication can be a real performance killer. 
Uh, please let me explain this by using female communication as an example, because I am a woman and I experienced all the following problems by myself. And also, as a soft skill trainer, I see that many women in particular, of course not every woman, but many women, um, are not taken seriously. They're passed over for promotions or they don't get a chance to speak. Much of this can be traced back to their communication skills. They um, are not present enough. They speak with a too quiet voice. They use submissive body language, inflationary use of apologies, living in the subjunctive. I'm so sorry, could I just please say something? I don't want to interrupt, excuse me. Eventually, these are for me the most common stumbling blocks in conversations. But why do we struggle with communication? It's such a natural thing, right? Why is there a proven difference between male and female communication? My approach is based on the assumption that we're sabotaged by acquired beliefs. From a young age on, we are told how we are. Boys are tough. They don't cry. They are leaders, builders. They don't wear skirts. Girls are polite. They don't interrupt others. They don't stand out, and certainly not in a negative way. They play family in the doll's corner. They have a helping role rather than being go-getters. And we take this mindset, these beliefs, with us into our adult lives, where it results in certain communicative characteristics, such as women have a hard time saying no, or they don't stand up for themselves. Men um, are often the leaders in conversations. But that's no big surprise, right? When you're constantly told how you are, how to be, or what we as women cannot achieve because we are not strong enough, we are not smart enough. We both, men and women, are told all our lives how we have to behave in order to be accepted by society. And if you don't change this, you keep on sabotaging yourself. When it comes to high performance, authentic communication is about being courageous, having the courage to show yourself as you are, be the person you want to be, be a good girl, be a badass entrepreneur, or be both, be a schuhplattler. Having the courage to say what you want, how you feel, having the courage to change your acquired beliefs, being authentic in your holistic communication instead of fitting in. This is the key. Because to fit in means adapting. Trying to behave and communicate in a way that is as comfortable as possible for the other person. Even if that means pain for me. Even if that means denying my values. For example, a woman at management level makes an extra effort to appear masculine. A man laughs at the racist joke made by colleagues, even if it makes him uncomfortable. This is adaption, pretending to belong. And adaption is the opposite of authenticity. So, what's the conclusion of all of this? First of all, start to change the way you communicate in your own head at first. Because if you change your communication, everything else will change. Your thoughts, your beliefs, your behavior, your actions, your experience. And I know this can be very hard, especially at the beginning. Remember, I said it's simple, not easy. So here are a few simple tips for you how to start to improve your communication skills. Number one, know your acquired, your inner beliefs. Know your values, phrase them. Number two, stop starting your sentence with an apology. Number three, avoid phrases such as, could I eventually, should I, maybe, be precise in your communication. Number four, you don't have to satisfy every need. Especially in business, you have to learn to say no clearly. Number five, use supportive body language. 
take it courage to stand up straight, to look directly in the eyes of the person you're talking to. And number six, you get what you tolerate. People will decide over you if you don't set clear boundaries. Be aware of what you are willing to accept. At, at this point, a small, gentle reminder for all of you who struggle with this. Because I know how you feel. I was one of you, and I wish someone had... <laughs> I wish someone had said this to me. You are strong. You are beautiful. You are worthy. And you are good enough in your own authentic way. You see, therein lies the real beauty. Choosing authenticity over adaption. Um, and this can be real high performance. No longer making yourself small so that others feel more comfortable, show presence. To represent your own opinion and saying no if it's necessary. Not waiting to be offered a seat at the table, but demanding it. This is my message for all of you. Don't you ever sacrifice your authenticity for other people's approval. When it comes to authentic communication, dare to communicate with confidence, dare to stand up for yourself, dare to be authentic, dare to be you. That's all I got. <laughs>